Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt over here at Primal, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Answering a question today from Marcus Brown. Marcus is a high school coach. He's just starting out, but he has a great idea of, of, of how to do the throws, but he has a question, and it's an issue that a lot of beginner throwers and even some advanced throwers have when they go through their throws. He says, hey Matt, I hope all is well. I have a question. I'm a new throws coach at a high school. I, have the, I, I know the throws pretty well, but I'm having a few issues with the preliminary stages of beginner throwers. How do you stress to an athlete to keep their legs more active in the throw? One of my throwers is rotational, and his spin is okay all the way until he reaches his power position. He doesn't get up under the shot. He gets out. And for the others, they are just starting, and I want to make sure I'm teaching their power throws correctly. Marcus Brown. Well, Marcus, this question is for you. And I'm glad that you asked the question because it's a very common question that a lot of beginner coaches have, and it's a common issue that a lot of beginner throwers have. And that's using a lot more leg in their throw. And now what this comes down to uh, is one of two things. Number one, not having the weight shifted correctly in the right spot. And number two, not landing with a, a bent leg, with a bent power leg, and not cycling through the, uh, the, the movement from the ground up. So just to show you, when you land in that power position, your rotational thrower might be landing in a great power position, getting ready to turn and explode and push that shot. The problem might be that his weight is not back over his power foot. So when he lands in that, in the power position, when he rotates out of the back of the circle, his weight might be in the middle of his body. And if the weight's in the middle of the body, what is going to happen is he's going to want to just turn his upper body and push that shot forward. When in reality, if he landed and he had that weight over the back foot, he would push and he'd be able to extend that leg first. Extending the leg first, getting the hips up, and then pushing that ball forward. So it's one of two things. They both kind of play off at each other. They both kind of are connected together. If the weight is not all the way back over that power leg, then he doesn't have the weight to push that ball forward. If the weight's not all the way back and the weight's in the middle, he's simply going to turn and push straight, push flat to the ground. If the weight is back and he moves the leg first, he's going to be able to push up and get underneath that shot, under the shot and behind the shot. Now, the other thing that might be happening is he might be landing in a great power position, but his legs might be completely straight. His weight might be over, but his legs might be straight. He might not have enough bend in this power leg. And if he doesn't have enough bend in the leg, well, obviously, he's not going to be able to extend the leg. And that's an issue that we see with a lot of beginner throwers, too, and some advanced throwers. When they land in a power position, their leg is straight. They're standing up nice and tall. Even though the weight is over the right leg, the weight's over the power leg, if their leg is already extended, well, now, again, same problem. The leg's extended, and you can't overextend the leg. There's no bend. So you have to make sure that, number one, He's landing on a bent leg. Landing on the bent leg is going to allow him to push and spring up and explode into that throw. Or, if he is landing on a bent leg, but his weight is in the middle of his body, all he's going to do is turn and push and make, get a nice flat push. So you have to make sure that two things are present. Bent power leg and that his weight is over that power leg. So that way you can combine the two. Pushing with the leg and then pushing up using those hips, getting underneath the ball, moving his weight forward so it can go up in the air instead of just horizontal, flat to the ground. Hopefully this answers your question, Marcus. Thank you very much. Marcus had sent an email to me, which is how I had actually received his question. There's a lot of other ways to get to me too. You can leave a comment on the YouTube video. You can leave a comment on the Primal Athlete Training Center Facebook page. You can leave a comment on the primalatc.com website, or you can actually, uh, just like Marcus did, respond to me by email. Now, these questions are going to be going up on our weekly newsletter. 
You're going to see a lot more questions being answered on the newsletter as opposed to daily blog posts. Blog posts are still going to happen, but those are going to be more for the local athletes, the local uh, throwers, and the local guys who are trained around the Rhode Island area. If you're from around the nation or if you're from around the world, you're going to want to have to sign up for our newsletter. So go to primalatc.com. On the right side of the page, you see where you can enter in your email address. We don't send out spam or sell your email or, or rent your email address or any of that stuff. I don't like getting spam, so I'm not going to do that to you. All we do is we send the newsletter once a week on Sunday evenings. It's going to have a lot of your questions in there that are going to answered by video. That way you guys have something to study and take to your athletes every week to help improve their throws and to help your athletes get better every single day. I hope to hear from you soon. Track season is only a few weeks away, so I expect these questions to pick up. So make sure you send those questions in. We'll get them answered for you right away. Thanks.